Welcome to the video, Dave here, and this is Heart Space. And in this video, we're gonna be going over something that you have had within you your whole life, that's been all around you your whole life, that ancient civilizations and traditions knew about and utilized the great power of what we're gonna be talking about today. And it's been right under our nose this whole time. And again, in the past, they knew of the potential of using this in the correct way. Um, the ancients used it for healing purposes, uh, for really other purposes too that raised their vibration, gave them more manifesting power. And we can do the same today, but we've lost touch with the importance of this element that exists on our planet, that exists in our lives, that exists within us. And if we can become aware of it again and learn how to use it, it can help us to become just very powerful manifestors, reality creators in the sense of creating your own reality in the way that you want it to be. What, you know, it's a life of fulfillment, having the type of job you want, vocation, health, relationships. This can go such a long way to helping aid that process to healing. This has healing properties when you use it correctly. And so this is something I've been wanting to make a video on for a very long time because it is that powerful. And what's crazy and great about this is actually very simple. It's something you, again, use every single day. And by just making a few slight adjustments, you take this thing that has probably been not only having a neutral effect on you most days, but can even have a catabolic or a negative effect um, for a lot of people if they don't become aware of its power and use it consciously. And so I'm gonna be going over what this is, um, stuff that backs up that what I'm saying is actually what's going on. And then of course, how to apply this at the very end, I'm gonna give you some of the things I do, some other things you can look at to really utilize this so that it's having a great positive effect in your life. Now, like I said, many ancient civilizations, many traditions throughout history knew of the power of this thing. And they knew of the power of so many things that we have lost touch with in today's world. They knew the power, for example, of vibration, of sound. Uh, they knew the power of pyramidal, uh, pyramid structures and other sacred geometry and structures that brought with it great energy. And they were just seemingly aware of all these things. And I'm, I'm not of the belief, uh, based on all the evidence I've seen, that we had very primitive ancestors. Maybe they exist in some form as well, but I actually think we had ancestors that were more in tune and more in touch with the universal principles and actually more advanced than us, which is why we see so much in today's world from, you know, like kind of the ancient world that we cannot explain and have no idea how to replicate. And we're only starting to learn more and more of how they did all these great feats or more of what they did in their advanced cultures, what they utilized. And the thing we're going over today is one of those things. And it's going to seem almost silly to you when I mention it, because again, it's something that is so simple and something you've been using your whole life, but it goes so much deeper, the ability of this thing and how you can use it. And that is water. Now that might sound very strange, like water, what are you talking about? You know, what, what can water do that it isn't already doing? Yeah, we need water to survive. You can go maybe three to five days without water. Um, if you drop, a, like, I think it's like 12% of the water within you, you die, something like that. But it goes much deeper than this. Water is an incredibly intelligent thing. And our ancestors knew this and knew how to use it for healing, knew how to use it to raise their vibration, knew how to use it to even record information. And so I'm gonna be going over some of the crazy things about water you probably didn't know. And of course, to add the practicality to it, how to use water, I know it sounds so silly, but how to use water to help you become a just incredible manifester, how to become healthier and reduce aging. I mean, there's so much into this, uh, and you may even want to explore this further beyond just this video after. But I'm gonna give you some stuff, again, about this substance that you've had in your life, your whole life, that's been around you this whole time, and that also makes about 70% or more of your body. 
So let's jump into it. So first, we really need to understand the power of water. And water is actually really interesting because it retains information and actually shapes itself based on its environment. And I don't just mean this physically, you know, there's like famous Bruce Lee quotes, like, be like water, my friend, because it will shape itself to whatever container you put it in. And that's already a pretty cool feature, but that's not what we're talking about here. You know, what we're talking about is that an energetic, kind of even molecular anatomic level is that water takes on the energy of its environment. It stores information, meaning if it's an environment that is primarily calibrated to fear, water will take on that information and reflect it in its molecular structure or in its, uh, its atoms will rearrange in certain ways to reflect that. And if you actually freeze water, based on different energies, you'll get different crystallization of the water that reflects that physically. And so water actually takes on information. And what this essentially means is it can take on the information of, say, health, or the information of lack of health and disease. It can take on the information of higher vibrations, or it can take on the information of low base vibrations like fear, guilt, and shame. It is insanely malleable and takes on the information of everything. And we find that even things that touch water, so for example, if you take water and you examine it, it will take on an imprint, an impression of the things that have interacted with it, like animals and other things as well. And I'll get into the significance of this later, because you might be like, well, what's the insignificance of that? And we'll get into that because it's actually highly significant and highly impactful for you. Now, one reason this is significant is because the more coherent water is, the more vibrant it is, the more benefit it has to you, the more alive water is. We can actually measure water on how alive or how dead it is. Water that is taking on an environment or is being influenced by an environment that's of fear, that's not really reflecting how water moves in nature, ends up actually becoming less energized and almost dead to the point where it could even have somewhat adverse effects. But more enlivened water, water that's vibrating at, you think about like higher vibrations, it's vibrating faster, it's vibrating in a much more freedom-based way, it's vibrating at these higher levels of energies, it is more alive and with it produces incredible benefits. And I'm going to give you some things in this, including experiments done to prove this and other things you can go explore after this, including an incredible area in Venezuela um, that has is very famous because the people who live there, they live long lives, they live disease-free, they're incredibly happy. It's kind of an untouched land. And they have water there that is essentially untouched, that is also energized through streams and other ways and through energy, and actually is 40 times more energetic, 40 times more alive than your typical water. The water from Venezuela was compared with ordinary drinking water. We can say that this water is not double, not triple, but it is 40,000 times more active. So these are really two fundamentally different substances. And water of this type, this water, which immediately activates the body, it activates the whole system. Water. And the people that went to research this water, it had amazing effects in their energy, their health, and their vitality. And so like I said, you can look into this more, but the people who live in this area are recorded as being insanely healthy. And they don't have modernized medicine, they don't have many modern things, nor they are recorded as saying they don't want it. They don't really want civilization to come there. They're incredibly happy, fulfilled, healthy, live to long ages. And that's because of the water that they drink here. That is because of what they eat comes from that water as well is contained within the foods that they have there. And what was very interesting is that the researchers that went there to specifically study the water noticed that after a few days that they were feeling better, that they were feeling more vibrant, that they were feeling more healthy. And there's actually a machine that you can do to record your energy field. And most people, when they go into this machine, you just put your finger in it and it will tell you kind of how your energy field looks. And most people, if they put their finger in this machine, have many gaps in their energy field. And what they found is they got all the researchers who went to do this exact thing and that their re, um, energy fields in the beginning had gaps and after visiting this village with this water that was so incredibly alive again 40,000 times more than your average water their energy fields 
filled out. And when your energy field is filled out, understand that you are more magnetic. When your energy is higher, you manifest better. You're on a higher wavelength. You're more in energies like love and vibrancy and health and um, abundance. And so just by visiting this place, the energy of the place that was being raised because of the water there, that was untouched by the outside world, just by being in that influence, their vibration, their energy, their energy field filled out and raised. And again, you're, the stronger your energy field, the more capacity you have to be healthier, to attract abundance, to magnetize towards yourself, to manifest. And this is where we're getting to the secret of why this is so important. Because if you are consistently surrounding yourself and consuming water that is more alive, and you can actually through your intention and other things we're going to get into enliven the water in your life. Because you might be like, well, I don't live in a village like that, Dave. How am I supposed to do this, right? Well, there are things you can do in order to replicate this. But when you start doing this, you start feeling better. You start influencing your health. You start becoming more vibrant. You start, there are even people who have lost weight just by drinking different water, more alkaline, more vibrant, more alive water versus whatever they were drinking before. Again, it seems so simple, but the effects of this can be so potent. And when we start understanding that water carries information. Water can be shaped by fear, but also by love. Water can really enable you to be healthy versus unhealthy. Not just from the perspective of drinking more water in order to be more hydrated, which is important, but the quality of water that you are drinking and understanding that you can have a massive influence on the quality of that water. It has even been shown that through experiments that if you say, for example, have a dog and you give them two types of water, one just kind of regular bottled water from any like a convenience store or something versus mountain spring water, the dog or the pet will always choose the mountain spring water. And this is because animals intuitively know which one to go for, which one is more potent, which one will benefit them the most. And it's just across the board, they always go for the more activated natural water water, the spring water, or the more, again, enlivened water. Okay, so that has given you more of an understanding of the power of water, perhaps some things you were not aware of. It goes well beyond just we need it to survive and it keeps us hydrated and you need to stay hydrated and et cetera, et cetera. Of course, that's important. And actually, a lot of people are not drinking enough water, period, let alone, uh, let alone enlivened water. But this is how you take it to the next level. Water plays a significant role in our lives. And remember that your body is made up of 70, sometimes even 90% water. And so is the water that you're putting in your body is the water that is literally coursing through your body at this very moment. Is it closer to dead water, which is going to send out a certain vibration? Or is it closer to enlivened water? Is it water that crystallizes and forms beautiful, coherent patterns that will then be transmitted out? Is it water that helps you be healthier, more vibrant, have more manifesting power, be able to live in the ways that you want to live? And that's how we're gonna, what we're going to get into, essentially, how to do this, how to allow for this thing that you're already doing anyway, drinking water, but how to take that and habitualize a way in which to be consuming water that serves you in a way that is using its power in order to help you live the life that you want to live. Now, the ancients, of course, knew this. And we know that they knew this, uh, knew this because of the way they would work with water. They even would put water in certain metal containers, um, I think like silver, which would, again, reshape the water to have more healing properties. They would also do things like have water in pyramids where they used to do energetic practices, usually practices that would raise the vibration of people in the pyramid, um, huge healing effects. They would have water while this was going on. And again, it would turn into to having this tonic healing effect when that water was consumed. The ancients absolutely knew the power of water. They knew the power of sound vibration, which is again, just energy on the water, right? You know, you look at ancient traditions, um, things like Christianity and other things with holy water, they measured the vibration, they measured um, the kind of the aliveness of water that was in a church during a um, ceremony where they were doing certain prayers and certain kind of sound um, practices. And then they measured that water and saw that it was insanely more enlivened, was forming incredibly beautiful patterns. That is the power behind holy water. And the ancients knew this completely. And there's way more they knew as well. You can go further, explore this, especially when it comes to things like pyramids. It's really, really interesting stuff, encoding information into the water. Again, 
completely fascinating, but I want to stick to what's really going to help you again with your manifestation, your health, and your general everyday living. Just as another caveat about that, it's one of the reasons that praying is uh, this ancient tradition that so many, again, traditions, so many cultures have. And it may be, you know, like we have a certain idea of why we do that now, but one of the reasons, and again, I, I, I definitely believe the ancients knew this, the ancient civilizations knew the effect this was having, but what this does when you pray with genuine gratitude, with love, and you give love and gratitude to the food before you're consuming it, it changes the structure of the water within the food. And again, I really believe our ancient ancestors so we're privy to this. It's not just something because, oh, you need to, you know, you're supposed to be grateful, whatever else. They knew what they were doing. And so this is one of the reasons so many traditions have saying a prayer before you eat. Now we're getting into one of my favorite kind of bodies of work um, ever, really. And this is Dr. Iyamoto's water experiments. Now, Dr. Iyamoto um, is a researcher in Japan. And what he's famous for is discovering that different things influence the vibration of water, influence the crystallization of water, and that we can actually change the structure of water by doing certain things. And so what he did in his experiments is he would really, in different ways, pump energy into water and then freeze them and see the crystallizations that they form. Now I'll put some on screen for you here. But what he would do is he would speak to the water. He would play different music to the water. He would take water from different areas. For example, he took one from a local dam. He took a local Tokyo water. And then they looked at water from, for example, natural springs or mountain springs, things of that nature, to see what the difference would be. And the results are absolutely incredible. For example, when you would speak the words love and gratitude into the water, they would form beautiful, coherent crystallization patterns. But if you spoke words of fear, or he would say, you fool in Japanese, it would take on this chaotic structure completely out of balance. And so what are the implications of that if you're drinking water, if you're consuming water, if you are just consuming it in whatever way, even bathing in that water that is in that chaotic, imbalanced form, what is that doing for you? opposed to if you're drinking, consuming, absorbing water that is in that coherent, balanced form, the love and gratitude or peace or whatever else it is. Um, he did this for different songs and how they formed as well. And ultimately what he showed was that the energy around water, like we said, water picks up on information. It shapes itself to its environment. And so in an environment that's of fear, water structures itself to align to that and becomes more again what we call dead. But in an environment of love and gratitude and peace, it structures itself to that and becomes more enlivened. And he showed this through multiple, multiple different experiments. And I'll say one thing of note that Dr. Iyamoto discovered is that seemingly the most beautiful and coherent crystallization and formations appeared from the words love and gratitude. When those were imprinted, impressed upon the water, it seemed that that created the, the most beautiful and most coherent patterns. And this is something that is definitely worth exploring at deeper and deeper levels. It's something that really blew my mind away when I discovered it. And it's caused me to do many of the things that I'm going to give you as far as tools to use in order to utilize some of the things we've gone over here. And so there's so many in there. There's another one where he took Tokyo water, and this is actually gonna be relevant to one of the tools I'm gonna to give you. But what he did is he took local Tokyo water, and as you can imagine, it's coming from a water treatment thing and all this different stuff. And in water, uh, water treatment, um, centers. Essentially, water is transported in like right angles and things you don't find in nature. It's transported in cities where a lot of the collective consciousness is fear and similar emotions. So by the time you get it, it's again, it's chaotic and it's basically dead. And he did an experiment where he took that Tokyo water, they kind of looked at the crystallization, very chaotic, and then they got a group of people and he said, what I want you to do is essentially give gratitude and love towards the water. And they did that, and it was a group of like eight people or something like that, including children. And they then afterwards took the water and did the thing again. They took another picture of it, crystallized it, and they noticed that the water's structure had changed. In this experiment, Dr. Emoto's researchers used a glass of Tokyo tap water, which seems to be unable to form crystals, and performed a test. Participants placed the glass in the center of their circle and sent gratitude to the water.
studying the water under the microscope, they started to see a crystal formation. Increased magnification showed the symmetry of the crystal, revealing how the tap water was transformed by the gratitude sent by the group. The crystal continued to grow, expressing the energies received. The tap water from Tokyo finally produced a beautiful crystal that just through the intention and the energy given off by the group of people towards the water, the structure changed. And this brings us into some of the things that you can do in order to enliven the water so that you are reaping the benefits of its power. So before we move on to some of the tools that are going to help you use this to become a better manifester, to become healthier and become, you know, reduce the aging process, to do so many of these things I've mentioned, to tap into this power the ancients knew, um, let me know some of your main takeaways so far from the video. Just let me know in the comments, pause the video, and let me know what's been an aha moment for you or one of your main takeaways so far. I would love to hear that. Now again, before we move on, to these tools, I just want to remind you that you are made up of water. Without water, you are, you're just dead. You, you can't survive. Water is pumping through your blood, in your, your, your cells. You know, water is something that influences you and your body. And why it's so important to understand the power of water, the, the, how complex it is beyond what most of us understand. We become aware of this and to then also utilize the tools that help it to serve us um, in our highest is because you are made up of that water. You are influenced by the water you consume and also what you do with the water already contained in you. And so that's why it's so crucial. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, there's so many people with gaps in um, their energy body, right? And this is something that is measurable. Most people have that. And guess what? By drinking more enlivened water, by giving yourself kind of stacking the deck in your favor, again, those people filled out their energy field. And guess what? If you're aiming to manifest, if you're aiming to shape your reality in more of a conscious way, to work with these universal laws and principles, um, if you're doing it with gaps in your energy field, guess what? You're not going to be uh, a very magnetic manifester, we'll say. You're not going to be someone who has much manifesting power. You potentially do, but that's why it is so crucial. We are made up of water, right? We are made up of essentially the energy um, of this water and how it's formed. And your life's happiness, your life's health, your life's, uh, your ability to bring about what you want to bring about is very dependent, not fully on this, but it goes a long way to help you also be in the energy you want to be in, be in those higher vibrations. Because again, if the 70% of water that makes up your body, and sometimes again, it's more for some people, like it can go up to 90%, is calibrated at a negative vibration. Do you think you're going to have a long hill to get up every day to get yourself back into higher vibrations? Absolutely. And so that's why it's crucial that we become aware of this and we start, again, utilizing it and it's not that hard to do. Now, some of the things I already mentioned were praying and just giving intention and uh, energy to water before you drink it. Now, this is crucial because again, it might just be something you do passively, you drink water, but simply just saying something and really meaning it like thank you or you know, saying love and gratitude before you consume water, before you take a bath, before you even jump in the shower or even continuously while you're in there, it may seems silly but will have an effect on the water. It is imprinted, it is impressed upon by the energy of what's around it. And remember, you are a powerful being whose intention has an effect and influence on your reality. And water is one of the most malleable and receptive to the intention of the environment around it. You are a conscious creator. And so by really affirming that, by really coming into your own, understand that the energy you're giving off is influencing the water in your life. And so again, simple things to do. You can just start with whenever you go to take a drink of water, take one second to say, you know what? Thank you. 
You know what? I'm grateful for this. Thank you. Love and gratitude. And then take the drink and just take a moment to pause. It becomes habitual after enough time. Before you eat, also giving thanks. You know, my girlfriend, whenever she cooks, she always comes from a place of love and gratitude because she's aware of these things. And so she's now cooking this food from that energy. And that has a massive influence on us. You know, we're insanely happy, fulfilled people. And I attribute a lot of this to that, of giving love and gratitude, not just in general, but to the things that we consume, the food, the water, and so on. And so getting into this habit of just giving gratitude and thanks and love to water whenever you're using it in any form, even when you're brushing your teeth, all this different stuff. Again, it might seem like, oh, I gotta do this all the time. Just do your best and work your way up to becoming more habitual with it. And when you're more habitual with it, you will be able to reap the benefits of this on autopilot. Next is to just really upgrade the quality of water that you're drinking already or using already. Now, obviously this means getting natural spring water when you can, getting alkaline water is also really good, or buying things that are going to help you upgrade the quality of your water. Again, even if it costs a little more, understand that there is a huge difference in quality between drinking like the normal bottled water. Um, water from, you know, regular water systems are usually, is usually terrible, filled with chemicals and things as well, which makes it even more less enlivened, makes it more dead. And just improving the quality of this water is going to go a long way. So getting spring water when you can. Now, another thing to do is avoid water in plastic if you can as well, because that plastic influences the water. Now, not always you're going to be able to do this. I'm still working on that because I have spring water, but unfortunately it comes in plastic bottles, but I have something else that helps counteract that. So getting better quality water is huge. Again, if you have somehow access to a mountain spring, you know, there are places you can go where you can fill up kind of gallon jugs with like fresh mountain spring water, that is going to be some of the best that you can obtain. Again, I'm going to give you more things you can do if you can't, because I realize not everyone can. Again, I can't even at this point, but doing that is going to already give you a leg up in just improving the quality of your water, your drinking water. Again, you can even get things like filters for your shower head, um, that helps remove a lot of the nonsense from, uh, from it. There are things, devices you can get that help enliven water by moving it in the same way that it moves in nature, which helps it as well. Glass bottles have better surfaces as well uh, that water likes. It's more like nature as well, where the ridges in plastic uh, is not something that water really likes. Now, another thing that you can do before I give you an incredible tool that's going to help, um, especially with your drinking water, is to always move your water before you take a drink. Water loves movement. It just loves it. It helps enliven it. It helps energize it. So regardless of what you're drinking it out of, just kind of giving it a shake, giving it a swirl before you consume it can actually give it kind of an energetic boost before you do consume it. Now, another amazing tool you can use, um, and this is a great one because it will help you do it passively. Now, I still recommend that you give your intention to water, but this is going to be great for when you're drinking water, and this is called a flask. Now, first and foremost, I'm not affiliated with them at all. I am just a huge fan of their products, and they've worked with Dr. Iyamoto's lab in order to make basically a kind of glass, a kind of material that helps imprint the water that you put into it. So essentially what you do is you put hopefully good spring water already again enlivened water into it but if you can't you just do your best put water into it you wait five minutes and the glass bottle will imprint the energy of love gratitude and other things in to the water. Um, and this is amazing because you can just passively put water into here and start doing that and already know you're getting incredibly well structured water um, that's very potent, that is enlivened, um, and that's going to benefit you greatly. Again, I still recommend saying thank you, being in gratitude every time you consume water or use water in other ways, but this is an amazing tool. So you can just go to Google and type in Flaska. Um, I believe you can get them in America and Europe and other places. Um, it's an great investment. It's really not that expensive either. And it's something you can use for years upon years upon years. And so I can't recommend this tool enough. Again, this is not an affiliation. I don't get anything if you buy one of these. This is just something that I find insanely helpful. Again, something especially in the beginning that's going to help you when you're maybe forgetting to bless the water or whatever else, because it does it for you. And that's an incredible tool that I absolutely love and can't recommend 
enough. Now, there is of course more that you can do, but I've already given you a few really simple things to start implementing. And you'll start to notice that you may actually start feeling better, you're, you're healthier, yeah, even more manifesting uh, manifestation is coming in, you're manifesting more. And ultimately, it's just to understand that this is something you're doing every day anyway, and just to become more aware of the true potential of this, how much you're leaving on the table as far as your health, manifestation, reality creation, and so much more, and just to implement these little habits in order to improve this. And again, once you start implementing these habits and they become habitual and things you're just doing all the time, you will notice a difference. It'll be one of those things where you wake up and go like, wow, a lot has changed, and you can kind of draw back and connect the dots back to having made these shifts. Um, but it is so crazy how uh, just how potent water is, how beautiful it is, how much it influences our lives, and kind of how deep this goes. And so I would also invite you to continue exploring the properties of water and the power of water. There's some great documentaries out there that you can go explore, but that's going to do it for this video. But anyway, if you want to learn how to create your reality even more, there's another component that you really need to get a handle on. And if you don't, you just aren't going to be able to create the reality that you want, and it's going to be the reality that someone else wants. So I go watch this video next where I go over completely how to program, reprogram your subconscious mind, which essentially you have to do if you want to be a reality creator, someone who creates it in the way that you want, the way you see fit. But I go over exactly why this is, how to do it, and the best tools that I know right over there.